Well, I've got this thing all laid out with a pencil, and that was a lot of fun. That's quite the road map there. Um, if you look at this print, this print is actually bottom view of the PCB, not of the IGBT, so basically this thing is a mirror image of that. So L1, L2 is down here as compared to up there and so I it was a little bit confusing but I got this laid out <clears throat> this uh, I'm still not the slightest bit impressed with this part of the data sheet but if I go if I scroll up to the next page and then over then this gives me the diagram of this IGBT as far as the schematic diagram so now I've got L1, L2, L3 and the whole works labeled on here so now I can do some testing and I've got my meter on the diode function I'll try to kind of get all this in here together at the same time Okay, right now what I'm doing is testing this right here, the L1, L2, L3. This is the bridge rectifier section right here of this IGBT. So I'm going to use the diode function L1 to uh, rectifier plus, I think that is. Like I said, this data sheet stinks. An awful lot of it's not very uh, legible. Now I'll do the same thing L2 and then L3. And we'll see what we get just with the meter itself. So let me find here rectifier 2. Okay, L1, L2, L3. Okay, good that way. Swap the leads. L1, okay, there's a diode drop 416, 421 at L2, 421 at L3. This is slightly lower, but eh, it probably doesn't really matter. So let's go on the rectifier minus side and then L1, L2, L3. Swap the leads around. L1, L2, L3. Okay, so at least with the multimeter the uh, diodes in the bridge rectifier seem to check good. They're not dead shorted or anything, which I really didn't think they were. Okay, next up is this first IGBT. This one here is for the brake chopper. That's why it's labeled B plus B, GB for gate, brake. And I assume that little mess right there is B minus. So let's see, notice I drew a little diode on there so I knew about where that was. Let's go across that diode, one direction, and the other direction. So it's obviously a Schottky rect rectifier or some other fast recovery. 0.36, okay, and let's go... B minus to B plus. We should be blocking. And we are. So that's good. Okay, next up we've got a thermistor there. Now I I should have uh, I'd scroll up, but this this laptop's a doggone slow, it'd probably take me ten minutes to get up there, but I should have gotten the value of this at room temperature, but it's 993, so I'm assuming that's a 1K, 1 kilo ohm uh, thermistor, so it's probably about right. It must be, uh, according to my thermometer up there, it's about 75 degrees in this garage, so that's more or less correct. So I'll go back on the diode function. So next up, we can go across each one of these IGBTs we go to DC I'm assuming DC plus and we can go UVW and then swap leads around 
and we should have blocking in one direction and then we should have a diode drop in the other direction. So DC plus UVW swap leads UVW we've got a diode drop so we'll do the same from DC minus U V W and then swap leads and it should block and it does all three points so as far as just initial multimeter testing this seems to be functional one thing that I don't have set up yet and I may or may not do on camera or maybe I'll do it on another video after this one is really need to trigger each one of these IGBTs and make sure that they turn on and then turn back off but I probably won't do that in this video but one thing that I will try and do is use my LC101 Okay, so I'm now testing the uh, high voltage blocking on the IGBT. I've got the uh, positive lead on the uh, so called DC plus, and then we're checking the blocking voltage of each one of these. So we'll see what we get there. So there's you. We're good. V. We're good. And W. We're good. So that's the... Uh, See, that's the top set of IGBDs, G1, G3, and G5. Now I should be able to swap around and go to DC minus, and I think I'll have to swap my polarities around. Let me shut this off, I'll experiment here. Okay, so now I'm checking these lower IGBTs here, the UVW, and then also the DC minus. Is it the emitter? So we'll see what we've got there. Okay, so there is the U. The V. interesting. The W seemed to uh, break over. Huh. wonder where it breaks. It's just starting to right there. So, that's interesting. The W on this IGBT, well, the DC plus and W, so that gives me um, IGBT number, I guess, G6246 appears to be breaking down at about 600 volts and it's starting to break down at 500 volts so I have to wonder was it not intermittently breaking down and that was causing the problems it's kinda of hard to tell it's a little bit tough to test these IGBTs with at least with the equipment that I have but I really have to wonder if that isn't what the whole problem was there that particular one right there is most certainly breaking down 
at a higher voltage it doesn't break it you could hear I don't know if you could hear it snapping it was starting to break down at 500 volts and it certainly was broke down by 600 volts so that's very interesting that these shouldn't break down until you're over until uh, at least 1500 the maximum maximum collector to emitter is 1200 volts on the chopper so it certainly should not be breaking down at 600 volts so that's kind of interesting that might actually be the problem with this unit is that IGBT is no good so I'm just kind of curious I'm going to ramp back up again on this one we'll see where's my little stopper at so put that in here There's 100 volts, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, Whoop. and there that time it broke at 1,000. So that's pretty intermittent. It um, doesn't necessarily always break at the same, or break over at the same voltage so that kind of tells me that that IGBT may have been intermittently breaking over and that might be why this uh, trolley was sometimes working and sometimes not working that kind of makes sense so I'd have to say that IGBT module is probably no good and if we're able to replace that that drive would probably work again but like I said they don't want to don't want to do that they want to just replace it with new and would and it has been replaced with new so that might be a good uh, this is something I just kind of thought of how I could test these here tonight that might be a good way of testing these modules and I've had a couple other modules in the past that I know they were on CNC mills that I know that the drive itself had definitely failed it shut the whole works down but I could never really figure out for certain what was going on with it and I'd always suspected that the IGBT was bad well now um, now that I see what's happening here it's pretty obvious you need to have a higher voltage sometimes to check that breakdown and checking with the meter isn't always going to isn't always going to find faults so I found that kind of interesting. I don't know if you did or not, but um, I guess I'll end this now. And I think this has given me an idea. I may just, I have several other different IGBTs out of different pieces of equipment. I may just do a video testing each one of these in a similar manner at some point. And we'll see if we can't find maybe a, a certain breakover voltage, breakdown voltage that may be deviates from the data sheet so I guess that's all for now